My name is Dr. Panther Gibby, and I would like to talk about my book, Ending Wars on Uganda's Children. I wrote this book after visiting Uganda with my sister and her friend. They were interested in seeing the country that had sent a pastor willing to fly to the United States based on faith that his needs would be taken care of. He had just enough money to reach California and to get a, ro a motel room for one night. He came on the faith that God would show him the right people to help him get to his next step. He wanted to build his NGO in Uganda and to help both the orphans and to build schools that would provide an education. His desire was to build that schooling for the three million orphans that had been left after continued warfare and conflict since 1962, when England had given Uganda its freedom. His faith was an inspiration to others who had attended the mission work of a group meeting there. The depth of his faith influenced many of the people attending that meeting. His needs were taken care of for the next month, and several people were touched by his dedication. Bonnie and her friend came to Uganda that next year. In Bonnie's excitement, she told others that Africa was everything she thought it would be. Another trip was planned for the next year with, uh, with their faith-believing friends. They were excited to help the NGO build the faith that God would provide help in providing for schools for Uganda convinced it would begin a rebuilding of their war-torn country. Uganda had been given their freedom by England in 1962, but the right combination never occurred as the first leader, the King of Uganda, was quickly deposed in the first year. The next leader, Milton Obote, was elected by a commission in 1963. As a northern member of Uganda, it was never fully supported so Obote introduced Idi Amin to help with Uganda's army. Idi Amin had his own ambition and his own plans. So in 1970, he became Uganda's leader by deposing Obote. During his reign, 300 to 500,000 people were put to death. The people were ready for change. And in 1980, Idi Amin was deposed and sent to Libya. Milton Obote was voted back in by a questionable election. But Southern Uganda had lost its trust in Milton Obote and war broke out in that district. Another 500,000 people were killed. Rebels began organizing and Museveni was one of them who fought back. In time, he brought peace to the Southern Uganda but in 1986, Northern Uganda, under Joseph Kony, brought discontent. His army of boy soldiers was undisciplined and began terrorizing the villagers. He intertwined Christianity and witchcraft to bring fear to their people. Boy soldiers attacked villages, uh, tearing down uh, huts, burning them with people inside thinking that kidnapping children would work to build his army. Young girls were kidnapped to serve as wives for the young soldiers. Somehow the South remained separate and helped the Acholi tribe in the North break free. Displaced camps were built for the Acholi to protect them from the terror that was being spread by Joseph Kony. Our team from the U.S. came to the Southern Uganda to help build schools there. Our first step was to bring clean water to the schools. After deep boreholes were developed in each school, we were finally given the okay to, if, that it was safe to travel to the north. When it became safe, we began making trips to Gulu. The north had been terrorized during Kony's reign, but the world knew little about what was happening there that not until the visitors were spreading the word did the story such as machine gun preacher and a Bodhi girls come to surface 
to explain what was happening in Uganda at that time. In the 1980s, AIDS had the country in a state of panic. And at that point, there were three million children left to take care of. Americans rose to the occasion and ending wars of Uganda's children is my story of how peace was finally accepted. Um, uh, the agreement was made that at long last, it was time to rebuild. I would like to thank UR Link for helping me present this part of my story. I am hoping that you will want to read the rest of it. It is an exciting chapter in Uganda's life. Thank you much.